Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. My name is Renee, and today I'm going to be talking about a lot of different things. I have an update for you guys as far as this channel and what I'm doing with it. I have a lot of plant things to talk about. So 2019 is coming to a close, and 2020 is coming up real soon, which is not only the new year, which is always great, everyone loves new beginnings, but it's the new decade, which I think is probably the most exciting thing for a lot of us, is the fact that this decade is over, and like, it was hard, like, this has been a very hard decade, the last few years, the last few years of this decade have been so ridiculously difficult, and I am just honestly energized and ready for the next decade, I'm ready for 2020 to start, and for that reason, I need to tie a cute little bow on this really shitty decade so I could put it up on my shelf and move on and I feel like a great way to do that is to close out the year of 2019 and just do all that kind of stuff before I get into all of that though I am gonna start with my update so I'll go ahead and leave a timestamp on the screen um, if you want to just jump forward to like the plant talk and stuff like that so if you've been subscribed to this channel for a while and you're wondering what the hell has happened if you go to my uploads I have had this channel for I think it's going to be eight years now. I've had this channel for a very, very long time. I made this a very long time ago. I haven't been uploading the entire time, but I have uploaded very, like, there are spurs of time where I will just upload a lot throughout the years. I have done a lot of uploading and video making over the last few years. But if you go now, you won't see any of those videos. I have kind of done a complete makeover to this channel. You'll also notice that the name is different. So my new channel name here is Renee's Eraceae. Eraceae. I know people pronounce that word different. It's basically just um, a name for a certain type of plant family, which is the aeroids. And so basically, I've turned my channel into a plant channel because that is um, a very big passion of mine. I don't think I'm ever going to give up a hobby like this, ever. Whereas with makeup, I do tend to put the hobby down and then pick it back up. And I haven't been feeling the need to upload to this channel, which if y'all don't know, if you're here for the plant content, um, and of Basically, since you can't see any of my old uploads, I used to have this channel as a makeup channel and I would upload a lot of tutorials and stuff like that. They weren't the best quality and these videos aren't the best quality either. I'm filming this on my iPhone with a rinky dink microphone that I got off eBay. I'm sorry if the audio just got weird. I'm gonna put this back down now. I wanted to start this channel as a plant channel. I had already made the transformation into a plant channel because I thought I was gonna leave makeup behind. But not even gonna lie, the last month honestly been feeling like I want to upload makeup videos again. All that to say that basically I went ahead and made a second channel for makeup stuff, skincare, um, stuff like that. Just anything that isn't plant related I'm gonna go ahead and put on the other channel. So if you want to go ahead and follow that, if you're an old subscriber of mine, you liked my makeup tutorials, um, you know, all that kind of stuff, you can definitely go subscribe to that other channel, and if you want to unsubscribe here, I understand because I have completely 100% changed what I'm doing on this channel, and I totally get it. I'm just really excited for a fresh new platform when it comes to that kind of content because I want that content to be as good of a quality as I can produce, and now that my quality has gotten better, I am so excited to just, yeah, upload new content there. Um, so if you're interested, make sure you go follow that. It's going to be linked up in the corners as well as down in the description. As far as this channel, I do plan on uploading a lot of great plant content and just talking about house plants, my journey, um, a lot of things that I've learned because I feel like I have learned and soaked in a lot of new information, especially over the last few months, and I just want to share it with y'all. Cool, so now that we got that update out of the way, let's move on into the other plant things that I want to talk about in this video. I really wanted to start off with my top plants of this year, plants that I either really super enjoy or have just been growing really really well for me but the first plant that I'm gonna talk about is my favorite plant in general and I just need to share it even though mine is not looking very good at all right now so <laughs> here's the new leaf isn't she a doozy yeah this plant has struggled a lot for me it hasn't done very well in my room this is the previous leaf to that new leaf, which I mean still got damaged from, um, it was having a hard time unfurling and it got really dried out. I do have a new leaf spike coming up in here, so I'm very excited. I have a lot of faith that that new one is going to be really, really good. It might not be the biggest size because it is winter and it's pretty much grown over the winter depending on when it finally emerges. So the next plant that I'm going to talk about is a little baby and honestly i love it very much it has a lot of love for me already this is my monstera type constellation 
I am obsessed with all kinds of variegated monstera, but I honestly purchased it because it is one of the more uncommon monstera that is still a lot easier and cheaper to get your hands on in comparison to the Albo versa Gianna. But now that I've had it for a while, I honestly have so much appreciation for this plant. Like the variegation that it's giving me is definitely a direct signal of how much love that I give to it and it's just been really responsive to me. Um, I think I had it for about three weeks rooting in water before the leaf that it came with was pregnant with that new leaf that we just saw. Which is really exciting because the new relief that it originally came with, this one here, it had only mint variegation. And then the new leaf that it pooped out when it came to me now has some cream variegation and light mint very. <laughs> I can't talk. It has cream variegation and light mint variegation and then the regular mint color and then the jade green. It's so beautiful. Okay next next baby that we're gonna talk about they're all really close to me because i keep my favorite plants by the window i know it's ugly favoritism but it's also because i'm constantly sitting in this area this is like my work living area i move them somewhere where i can see them all the time which is right next to the window uh so i'm basically like a house plant too but the next plant that i'm gonna talk about is right here this is my philodendron melanochrysum and this is actually a christmas gift that i got from my boyfriend um, he imported this for me from Indonesia and as we can see it's not doing extremely hot. This new leaf that I came with hadn't unfurled quite yet when it got to me like it was still completely wrapped and it took I think about I want to say three to five weeks before it started to unfurl and then I want to say about two and a half weeks ago it started to just do this thing where it just went completely limp so I moved it out of the water and into some moss, which we will actually talk more about later. It hasn't quite bounced back yet, so I don't know what's going on. Regardless of the fact that it's not doing well, um, it was a big Christmas gift for my boyfriend because it was at the top of my wish list for qu quite... I can't talk. It was at the top of my wish list for quite a long time, quite a few months, and so when he got it for me, I was very excited. And I love my baby boy. I have had him for a while, so he was a very early Christmas gift, but don't tell the rest of my family, he's definitely one of my favorites. Okay, so the last plant that I'm going to mention is on this list, mainly because it has been quite a... Ooh, it's been quite a prolific grower for me as far as the genus that it's in. This is my Alocasia Frydeck. Here he is in all of his glory. So this is the newest leaf growing in right here. He is not done yet, okay? This leaf was 100% all me and it's huge. I'm really hoping that this one will, if not exceed it, at least grow to be this huge. So there's the head test. It's a pretty big leaf. He is on this very interesting little wooden thingamajig that I made. So I like when all of the leaves, at least on my allocations, I like when all the leaves face one direction. I liked it propped up that way, but because of the way that the seller that I bought it from had given it to me, like the stalk is kind of curved. So under the dirt, the stalk is sitting horizontally. Because of how the roots had grown in, it's just more convenient to leave it the way the seller had sold it to me. So I kind of needed a way to make sure that it stayed vertical and also didn't take up a whole lot of space in my room. So I kind of came up with something and this is what works for now. Um, I'm not sure what's gonna happen when it gets really, really big. Sorry for the lighting change, I don't know what El Paso is doing. And it's like pretty much the only alocasia I've ever had that's done fairly well in my room. I have owned, I have owned numerous alocasia poly, numerous alocasia elephant ear, the regular green one, numerous variegated alocasia, none of them like it in here. The alocasia friedic though, it likes it. I'm just gonna tell you guys right now, if you want an alocasia that will actually love you, I would recommend trying the alocasia friedic because I've heard of a couple of other people saying similar things. Those were pretty much my top plants for this year. It was hard to choose so many plants and not have to include all of them, but I knew I had to choose the ones that I constantly check up on and the ones that are deep down in the pit of my soul, the ones that I worry about the most. The next category that I wanna talk about are some of my absolute favorite plant parent buys. I've already made a video similar to this where I talk about all of the things that I've bought that have really helped my plant parent journey and I'll link it up in one of the corners. And the things I want to highlight in this video are things that I don't hear other YouTubers talking about. So 
Um, I'm not going to talk about my hydrometer because I know a lot of other plant tubers talk about that, which if you don't have one and you're a starter, if you are never sure of what moist feels like, buy yourself a hydrometer, you will stop killing so many plants, like just trust me on it. But like I said, because a lot of other YouTubers talk about it, I'm not really going to go into too much depth with that. One of the items that I really want to highlight in this video that I don't hear a lot of plant tubers talk about is filtered water filtered water. A lot of people like to leave out water for 24 hours, 48 hours a week to let chemicals evaporate, um, which may work for you depending on where you live, how hard your water is, what's in your water, etc. I generally find it a lot easier to not question it and just filter the damn stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just filter it. This I bought at Walmart for $20 total. I believe it did come with one filter for the pitcher and then I think it might've came with an extra one if I'm correct. I have already gone through both of those filters because I've had this for months now so I've been using it a lot and I do use it a lot. Okay, when I say a lot, I mean I use it pretty much every single day. I have noticed a large, vast difference in the brown tips that I was getting in my plants. Like a lot of it might be subject to the fact that I have was having problems with overwatering my plants a lot but I noticed that even after I had bought my hydrometer and I was still using tap water I was still getting a lot of brown spots and brown edges on a lot of my plants and I wasn't sure what it was for a while I did some research and I decided that I was just gonna start um, filtering my water because I wanted to give my plants the best shot possible and um, as much as I didn't want to have to buy a filter like I was super annoyed by it at first at the same time, like, I put a lot of money into my plants. I have spent a lot of money on plants. I have spent a lot of money replacing plants. So my plants get the best treatment. They get filtered water. I love my children and I give them the best that I possibly can. So the next item I'm gonna talk about, I already know, I spoke for a long time about the other items. This is gonna be bad. So this is the Super Thrive. I'm definitely gonna make a separate video completely reviewing this, but this is the original vitamin solution and it includes kelp. So in my eyes, it's kind of really similar to liquid kelp along with other things in there. Um, I'm not gonna read everything that's in here. If you wanna do your research, you're more than welcome to, but I found this little bottle at my local Lowe's, I think it was, for I think about 12 or $14, somewhere in that price range. Um, so it was really inexpensive and i use this literally all the time i'm gonna spare you guys the details for the review video and also because this video is already gonna be so long because i already have 30 minutes of footage to go through and even though i've been using it even throughout winter my plants have had absolutely no complaints but do keep in mind when i say that that i live in texas i live in a dry area of texas and it is even though it's super cold um, we're still getting a decent amount of sun and it's not freezing, but without giving away too much detail, I just want to tell you guys up front, straight up, if you have any struggling plants, if your plants are struggling a little bit, I highly recommend trying this out. It is, like I said, super cheap at Lowe's, very convenient if you have a Lowe's nearby you. If not, you can definitely try your local nursery. Next thing that I'm going to talk about, which is probably another thing that I'm going to make a separate video on in the future, but I really want to mention it right now are hefty Ziploc bags um, or hefty bags. I Technically it wouldn't be Ziploc if it's hefty because Ziploc is a brand, right? So the big bags that you use for the freezer, get the big ones. I have the gallon ones here. I believe there are other ones that you can get that are even bigger than this. Um, and I basically use them as very small greenhouses. So I'll bring one out from where I have it so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So right now I have this open for ventilation and if you're wondering in here I have some Anthurium clarinervium seeds that I sprouted personally. Another separate video to come. I'm telling you guys I have a lot of plant content planned. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about I actually don't have with me on hand right now. I literally only have enough of it to fill a pot and that's why it's not in its original packaging but you will notice that I've been using a lot of it very recently and that is sphagnum moss. I've been very scared of sphagnum moss for a while. I've been seeing people use sphagnum moss with their plants for a while now. Um, of course, most commonly with orchids because it's usually what it's being sold for, what it's marketed for. But then I started to see people using it with their house plants and I was kind of nervous about it at first and I remember I was talking to a very great plant friend of mine who I will mention later in the video and talk more about later in the video. But I mentioned to her that I had gotten a cutting of a Hoya, which didn't survive, rest in peace. 
and she told me to try to root it in sphagnum moss and i was like uh i have never done that and i don't feel like losing my hoya cutting so let me just put it in water instead and honestly since then i have gained such a better understanding of sphagnum moss and a better relationship with sphagnum moss and thinking back now, I totally should have just used the sphagnum instead of the water because then maybe it would be here today. And you'll even notice I had my Monstera in some sphagnum moss. You will also remember that I had my Melanochrysum in sphagnum moss right now. I had my Gloriosum top with sphagnum moss. Like, I just have a very close relationship with sphagnum moss now. I use it a lot. I use it for my cuttings. I, use it, I used it for my seeds. I love it and I use it all the time. The next thing I'm going to talk about are my grow lights. I love my grow lights and these in particular are some of the best that you can get on the market for a decent price if you want to ask me. Um, you could definitely get some more intricate setups but this is really easy, very simple, pretty decently cost efficient. You can find these on eBay for about 12 or 13 dollars. I did not pay that price for these because I paid extra basically for fast shipping. It is clampable and it did come with these little cushions for my furniture which is great because I have both of these on wooden furniture. You'll actually see the other one in the background. The two best features on this though is that one it is dimmable it has i think five or six different brightness settings and also it's timed which is great because of course you don't want to forget to turn off your grow light and then possibly burn your plants but it is the type of timeable where i turn them on at 9 35 in the morning one day and i just you know i set them to i set one to a six hour interval and the other one to a 12 hour interval because there are only three options three six and twelve well the next day at about like 9 38 one went on and then at 9 39 the other one went on so even though it's about a four to five minute difference depending on the following day as long as there is as long as there is a continuous electrical current, these are going to continue to turn on at more or less the same time you turn them on every single day. But honestly guys, like I have never liked grow lights more. I have looked into many different grow light situations and this just works out the best for me. I can choose different places to put it so when I install it, it's never permanent. They are definitely worth it and I am going to be purchasing at least two or three more of these suckers. Uh, and that's another thing, I do plan on changing up a lot of my plant setup in my room in the next couple of months, so those grow lights are definitely going to be part of the plan, and I'm excited to bring you guys with me when I execute that. It's going to be very fun. That is pretty much it for all of the physical material things that I'm going to talk about when it comes to um, a lot of the things I discovered this year in 2019. I kind of just want to close the video off by talking about some of the people and plant accounts that I have discovered as well. But because I know it is a long one, I'm going to try and not be too sappy and sentimental about this. Um, but the first person I want to mention is a plant friend that I kind of mentioned earlier in the video. Her name is Chloe's Cultivar, or Chloe, of course, that's her name. She is honestly one of the coolest people I've ever met. She is so nice. She's super kind. I love the photography that she has on her Instagram account, and she does also have a YouTube account, which I'm sure has already been linked up in the corner of the screen. But regardless of how like cheesy and lame it is, she is honestly one of the only people that I've ever met. Um, or ever talk to that it's very easy to vibe with it's very easy to talk to she's just like honestly the coolest she's the most understanding and like Chloe dude if you're watching I like love you and like you're just awesome she's one of the best plant people she's so smart and she's a great friend and I just shout out to Chloe man she's just great okay I could talk a lot more about her but all I'm gonna say is she's fantastic go follow her uh, the next account I'm gonna mention is actually kind of how I met Chloe and she's a really big inspiration to me as well it's Ashley from Plant Me Ashley, and honestly, she is the best. She's funny. I love her videos. I like watching her content. She's very smart as well. I've learned a whole lot from Ashley, and um, there was a video that she did with Chloe. I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly what video it was, and she was like, hey, you know, like, this is my friend Chloe. This is her Instagram. Go follow her, and I followed Chloe, and then... I think she messaged me and then I messaged her and like now we're friends so I guess I kind of have Ashley to thank because I don't know if I would have ever discovered Chloe if not for Ashley. The next people that I'm gonna mention, I'm gonna just knock them out really quick, um, Botanical, I love his videos, he's very informational. Uh, definitely if he were to start a podcast, like talking about anything, I would listen because he has a very relaxing, soothing voice. 
um not dude is very hilarious very relatable he's always on point with the nail polish color i love the fact that he drinks in his videos like he's just super funny the next person i'm gonna mention i've actually been following their account for a while and it's becca de la plants i love her videos so much she's very like chill but she's also very funny like i don't know something about her um is just very relaxing and she feels like a friend in this like she feels like my friend in the screen and i know that's very common when it comes to youtube viewers and um people who make content but she's just very friendly like it just feels like you're sitting there with a friend talking about plants or like potting something and I just really love her channel. Okay, and the last plant channel that I'm going to kind of give a shout out to, I have a, quite a few others that I really, really want to mention, but the one that I definitely want to give my shout out to is Garden Answer. They were my first ever plant channel that I ever was interested in. Even back in my serial succulent killer days, like I was watching Laura and Erin, and I just love their content. Like they have such a beautiful property beautiful gardens their child is just honestly so cute and their videos are just like not very like vibey but like very cozy okay so very long video but that's pretty much it make sure to subscribe to my other channel if you want to see more like makeup stuff skincare stuff it's going to be at renee g it's also linked down in the description box if you're interested if you want to see more plant content from me, make sure to subscribe to this channel and you can also check out my plant Instagram. And I also have my personal Instagram and my Twitter that I'm very active on. All of that is going to be linked down below in the description box if you're interested in any of that. Other than that though guys, I hope everybody had a great Christmas or whatever it is that you celebrate or if you don't celebrate it at all, I hope it was at least a decent day for you all. Um, and hopefully the New Year's is even better and I will see you sometime soon hopefully. Bye guys.